Hi, welcome to our virtual talk at Hotnets 2021. My name is Ali Abedi, and this is a joint work with my colleague Omid Abari. In our paper, we study if Wi-Fi backscatter can achieve the range of RFID. The RFID technology has been around for more than 20 years. RFID tags are cheap and battery free. So this technology is great. But why we don't see RFID everywhere? The main reason is that RFID readers are bulky and pretty expensive. So researchers have designed Wi-Fi backscatter in which we use existing Wi-Fi devices to read battery-free tags. We have more than several Wi-Fi backscatter systems, but unfortunately, all of them suffer from a limited communication range. Let me first explain what backscattering is. Transmitting a wireless signal is very power-hungry that a battery-free tag cannot afford. In backscattering, we reflect or backscatter an existing signal to communicate. In this talk, I use light to demonstrate some ideas. In this video, I use a piece of metal to reflect or not reflect the light. I can essentially use this idea to communicate data. If RFID and Wi-Fi backscatter use the same idea for communication, how come the range of Wi-Fi backscatter is much shorter? Let's see how these technologies work. An RFID reader sends a signal to a tag. The tag reflects this signal back. RFID readers use a full duplex radio that can remove the original signal and decode the tag's data. In Wi-Fi backscatter, a Wi-Fi device can send a signal to a tag, but it cannot receive the backscatter signal because it cannot simultaneously send and receive. To fix this problem, Wi-Fi backscatter systems use a second device to receive the tag's data. However, remember that the second device receives the Wi-Fi signal too. This signal creates significant interference for the receiving device. Let's demonstrate this problem using our light experiment. In this experiment, the metal reflector reflects the sunlight to the white screen. However, it is very difficult or impossible to see its reflection because the direct sunlight is creating strong interference on the screen. The direct sunlight is so strong that our eyes or the camera cannot distinguish the relatively weak reflections. But how weak is the reflected signal compared to the original Wi-Fi signal? We have been exaggerating the strength of the reflected signal for better visual appearance. In reality, the power of the backscatter signal is at least a thousand times weaker than the Wi-Fi signal. The quality of the tag signal at the receiver, denoted SNR of tag, is defined as the power of backscatter signal divided by the power of Wi-Fi signal. As a result, the SNR is very low. This is why the range of Wi-Fi backscatter systems is so limited. To improve the SNR of tag, we propose a technique that reduces the Wi-Fi signal at the receiver. As a result, the interference from the original Wi-Fi signal is reduced and it becomes much easier for the receiver to decode the tag's data. Before we present the details, let's watch how our idea can be applied to the light experiment. We repeat the last experiment, except that we add an object to block sunlight to the screen. This is reducing the interfering signal that increases the SNR of the reflector. Now, we can easily see the reflections on the screen. This is an interesting idea, but can we implement it on a Wi-Fi device? The answer is yes. A Wi-Fi device can send multiple concurrent signals with different phases in a way that the signal is cancelled at a particular location. This feature is called nulling, which is supported by most modern Wi-Fi devices. So we can use it to implement our idea. Let's put everything together. In our proposed technique, a Wi-Fi transmitter sends a signal while it nulls the signal at the Wi-Fi receiver device. The tag receives the Wi-Fi signal normally and reflects it. Since the original signal is weak at the receiver, 
because of nulling, it can receive and decode the backscattered signal. Let's review an example. Suppose that we have an access point that nulls its signal for the Wi-Fi device. Here, we show the intensity of the signal of the access point at different locations. Brighter colors indicate the stronger signals. In this case, the tag is in a bright region, so it receives a strong signal and it can backscatter it. But what happens if the tag is also in a location where the signal is nulled? To answer this question, we need to understand how nulling works. We can show wireless signals using vectors. The length of the vector indicates the amplitude and its direction indicates the phase of the signal. When an access point sends two signals, they are nulled at a location if the vectors of the two signals have the same length with a 180 degree phase difference so that they cancel each other. If the signal is nulled for the tag 2, then the vectors will have the same properties for that location as well. Can the access point change the signals in a way that the signals are nulled only for the Wi-Fi device and not the tag? It turns out that if the access point has only two antennas, it is not possible. The issue is that the received signals at the Wi-Fi device must have the same amplitude but 180 degree phase difference to cancel each other. Therefore, even if the access point uses a different phase and amplitude, it does not help. However, if the access point has at least three antennas, we can solve this problem. Suppose that the three signals arrive at the Wi-Fi device and the tag like this. So the signal is nulled at both locations. Now, the access point can change the signals in a way that it is still nulled for the Wi-Fi device, but not for the tag, as illustrated in this example. As a result, if the tag cannot be read, the access point can change the nulling configuration in order to improve the signal for the tag while the signal is still nulled for the Wi-Fi device. We have implemented the nulling idea on two Wi-Fi devices and have evaluated its performance in different line-of-sight and non-line-of-sight scenarios. I now present some of these results. We have conducted our experiments in a house. We placed the Wi-Fi transmitter and receiver about 2 meters apart. In this line of sight experiment, we placed the tag in 20 different locations. Each circle indicates the location of the tag and the number inside the circle is the SNR of the tag measured at the receiver device. The results show that in most locations, the SNR is strong. The maximum range is 5 meters, which is the distance of the tag to the nearest Wi-Fi device. The range of RFID in line of sight scenarios varies between 2 and 10 meters, depending on the tag and the reader used. Remember that RFID can achieve this range only if the tag is in front of the reader, because they use directional antennas. So our 5 meter range is comparable to the range of RFID in this experiment. We have repeated the experiment in non-line-of-sight scenarios as well. In this experiment, the tag is placed in three different locations behind the drywall in a different room. This scenario is very challenging because the wall attenuates the Wi-Fi signal and the backscattered signal. However, the SNR is very good in this experiment and we could achieve a range of 3 meters. RFID can work up to 3 meters in this scenario, so our range is similar. One important point about this experiment is that existing Wi-Fi backscatter systems do not work in this scenario. We have done other experiments and have compared the range of our system with the state-of-the-art Wi-Fi backscatter systems. Please refer to our paper for more information. Overall, our experiments show that the nulling idea can enable Wi-Fi backscatter to achieve the range of RFID. In this talk, I explained that Wi-Fi backscatter systems suffer from a limited range. We presented a new idea that significantly improves the range of these systems. Our evaluations show that the nulling idea enables existing Wi-Fi backscatter systems to operate in scenarios that were not possible before. Thank you for watching this video.